Um, and yeah, I, I would just to echo a couple of the things that were mentioned earlier. That question, what is money, has a lot of answers. One of which, as I think you've related in the past, is that money is essentially a contract of the future. And today, fiat currency, it's a violated social contract. So we have a money by which an institution effectively robs our future. They're compelling the demand for this money and they're violating its supply to enrich themselves and dispossessing everyone else, mo mostly people economically vulnerable. And to the point about morality, it's like if we don't have a secure social contract in the most important market in the world, which is money, then we can't possibly have a foundation for a sound social morality. So it, it, it causes people to be more short-term thinking when your money doesn't hold value over time. You can't plan. Uh, you can't create trusting long-term relationships. And then the, the last piece to that is, you know, with, with central banking violating the supply of money, they are twisting our perceptions. We perceive the world economically through prices. And when that perceptive, that perceptual mechanism is twisted, it, it breaks down your valuations, your goal orientations. Um, your trust. Really just trust. Yeah, it, it really corrodes socioeconomic fabric, social morality. Uh, and, and even individually, to John's point, I think it really breaks us down. And I've, I've experienced that personally in my life. I've, I've kind of flown high and mighty on the fiat currency standard. And I've experienced a certain set of character traits develop in myself. And I've experienced an antithetical set of traits uh, develop in myself as a result of studying and interacting deeply with Bitcoin. So I can you can you elaborate on that a little bit? You're making a moral contrast that's personal. There's a story there. I'm kind of curious about it. So, <laughs> yeah, I. Um, I made a lot of money quickly at a young age, and I would say that I, I walked a bit of a darker path where I just thought that I had made it, I had arrived, I would just kind of party and cut up and travel. I didn't have a lot of, I had lost that deeper sense of meaning or sense of purpose that, that you speak so eloquently to. And, you know, you don't know it when you're up against it. I still thought that I was um, doing good things and was more or less a good person, but I was just going further and further off course, you know, becoming more and more short-term oriented, more and more uh, pursuing immediate biological gratification, whether it's, you know, drinking or, or whatever. Um, and Bitcoin and this rabbit hole just gave me the, the larger lens, which we talk about time preference. And when we say lowering your time preference, what we mean is we're expanding your time horizons. So, you're, you gain a greater sphere of concern, let's say, beyond yourself. And that, that, that sphere is made up of space and time. And as you do that, you start to see yourself as increasingly a more humble and infinitesimal piece of the total picture. But somehow it also enriches you to want to really dig into whatever gifts you have and give back to the, the whole picture. And why do you um, think why do you think the fiat currency why do you think the fiat currency versus Bitcoin issue is relevant to that conundrum? Do, you know, it we could say it in the very severe original state of nature, where we're all just cavemen running around trying to eat um, and and you know have shelter. That is an uh, an environment with a lot of scarcity, right? There's a lot of economic scarcity because we haven't begun to trade, we haven't created the division of labor and specialization that creates wealth. And I would argue that fiat currency, because it, it generates arbitrary inflation, so it's, it's artificially magnifying prices in the world, it's increasing prices when prices should be declining as we get smarter, it's actually magnifying the perception of scarcity in the world. And I think that contributes to social divisiveness, uh, up to and including things like cancel culture and other things we see in the world today. Uh, I, I really believe that artificial central bank induced inflation is a corrosive moral cancer on society. 